Executive and Creative Director of Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. Today we are here at Nathan Phillips Square and this is Canada's largest and longest running outdoor art fair. We're showcasing over 350 artists here and artists uh, they're showcasing work from all sorts of mediums, painting, photography, digital media and um, they're selling their work. Uh, this is the chance for the public to come and connect with the artists directly and it's a very accessible art show and you can bring a piece of work uh, to your homes and we have a fantastic programming as well there are art tours art installations and a great programming of dance and music so it's a perfect weekend for Torontonians to come to the square and spend time with the artists and have a great time here My name is Sophie, um, I'm here at Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. Today we are on the square at Nathan Phillips Square. It's the final day of our fair, it's very exciting. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take you along some of my favorite artists on the square. Follow me. <laughs> okay, so we have, so am I pronouncing this right? Sari, Sari Zahn. Do you mind just telling us a little bit about your work? I really, I love the colors. I'm, I'm upset. Thank you. Yeah, I, I work in uh, mixed media and abstracts, um, and my work is very intuitive. It's for me, it's all about the process. It's not. I don't really worry about the outcome until it's done, um, and it's really just like something that I enjoy to enjoy doing. I'm I'm working with colors and lines and lots of layers, and I'm really getting my hands dirty. And uh, yeah, the. Toronto Outdoor Art Fair is awesome. Thank you. Of course. Is this your first year or have you, are you a veteran? Um, I'm a veteran artist, but it's my first year doing this show because I used to work in encaustics and they would melt in the heat. So it's my first year in working in acrylic. So I'm actually really excited to be able to finally participate. <laughs> That's amazing. That's great. I mean, we don't always have this good weather. So you, you picked a good year to start. Yeah, I, I absolutely love your work. Thank you so much. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Okay, let's continue. Thank you. Okay, this is one of my personal favorites. This is Jessica Hill. Jessica, Hello. hi, how are you? How are you? Good, can we talk to you for a, sure. a bit about your art? Yeah, thank okay. you. So this is fiber art. I mostly work with wool, some different fibers like cotton and acrylic. Um, and it's all weavings. So my method is weaving. I use frame looms if you want to have a look. This is kind of what I use. So this is my smallest, and then I go up in size from there, and anything from teeny tiny to like massive, fill your wall. Beautiful. So what have you thought of Toronto Outdoor Art Fair this year? Is this your first year? Yes. Great. <laughs> yeah, my first year doing anything like this, so oh, wow. it's been super fun. The volunteers are amazing. People are enjoying just coming in and chatting and asking about the work. Right. Yeah, that's my, that's my favorite part of Toronto Outdoor Art Fair is being able to bond with the artists, the patrons, the volunteers, the staff. Everyone is just here because they love art and we all get to chat about it. We all get to bond. It's, it's really awesome. It's been good. Thanks. And thanks for going around and showing everyone's booths. Of course. I mean, you, you deserve to be seen. You, I love your work. So thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. And just repeat, do you want to repeat your name, your booth number? I'm Jessica Hill at Jessie Lee Art if you want to follow on Instagram I do post most of my work so Great. also um, our online fair is running so check that out you're, yeah. you're online yeah okay Jessica Hill let's continue thank you thank you <laughs> sorry about 
Okay, next I'm going to take you to another amazing, we're switching it up a bit with a different style. This is um, Ali Rahimi in booth B162. Hi Ali, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Can you please tell, this is so unique and special, can you please tell me a little bit about your work and your process and how long you've been doing this? Yeah, sure. These are uh, 3D printed, so people ask, are these metal? But I said, no, these are 3D printed, so the base material is uh, plastic. And I'm, actually, I'm a 3D artist working about uh, two decades, uh, 3D animation. Uh, I started with Maya version 2. So first I made the 3D animation. The whole process of uh, concept of design started in Maya. And so each one actually have a separate animation, which uh, you can, but I couldn't put it there. So I need a bigger screen to show off the animation. And then when it's done, I also out output uh, another real time version of it into a sketch web. So actually what you see, you can uh, see it in real time, like game uh, in your computer beside the animation. So to output till now and the third output is 3D printed. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, thank you. But actually, these are FDM 3D printers. So again, the same mat uh, the mat base material is plastic, but uh, well, part by part, it depends on the scale of the model and the volume of the 3D printer, and uh, then some of them uh, stick them together. For example, uh, that big one took about three months to print. Wow. So they are different. There are lots of promises. Don't want to get <laughs> that much into details, and but. The final touch is to sanding and uh, lots of post-processing and <clears throat> then a very special kind of color, uh, yeah. special kind of, which is called patina, uh, mostly. They, they, they that's take, that's yeah, kind of the turquoise yeah, here? Uh, yeah, it uh, adds some erosion effect and for example these are copper, oxidized copper. Actually the, uh, the color uh, have uh, 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 copper powder itself in, in itself and then <clears throat> I sprayed another special <laughs> kind of colorful as acid. These are our product of the co some companies for Scalp Nova. Very perfect product. Cool. Yeah, and so lots of things going on. And then the final look is uh, it's what you see. Yeah, yeah, it is such a unique process. I, I honestly, yeah. I've talked to a lot of artists this weekend, and that is so interesting. Wow, yeah. and I would love to see the animation as well. Yeah, you should, uh, the animations are available in my Instagram and website. Sure, do you want to? Let me know what it's called, what your Instagram is called, or your website? Uh, yeah, the, the website is freeradical666.com. Okay, yeah. good to know. I'm definitely going to be checking yeah, that out. Sure, definitely. Thank you so much, Ali, Thank for talking so to us. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Are you enjoying the fair? Yeah, that's great. The whole thing. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. The, the amount of visitors is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. We cannot find anything like this in whole Canada, I'm sure. Like, I mean, it's Canada's biggest, right? Yeah, definitely. It's Canada's biggest. I mean, yeah, it, everybody should uh, participate here. It's great. I agree. Also, be sure to check out our online fair, which you are you yeah, are there as well. Already have on uh, ten of this uh, sculpture already is our in uh, online fair. Great. Yeah. Good to know. So that's Ali Rahimi, booth yeah. B162, yeah. and online. Please check him out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, six. We have Deep T Saxena with us today. Um, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are yeah. you? I'm good. Are you enjoying the fair so far? Uh, a lot. I have no words, honestly. This is my first time here, and I'm thrilled with the experience and the crowd. I'm so glad to hear that. It's a good crowd. Um, do you mind telling us a bit about your work? It's so beautiful. Sure. Oh, thank you so much. So this is like in my uh, you know personal experience which I have as an Indian Canadian artist. So I travel a lot between India and Canada and I, I know both the cultures right. So that is what I want to show in my work which is like you know the you know the Indian motifs and Indian you know uh, designs which is these. These are like basically Indian form of uh, abstract designs and that's merging with the modern abstract. So that's that's the that's the overall theme of the work and I do love uh, you know doing you know like bold compositions that's what I do in my work and yeah I do have larger pieces because that's what I love the most cool. I love how it's kind of like peeking through mm -hmm. the kind of is it is it paisley is that what I yeah the, it's paisley, yeah the one of it is paisley but overall this these are like nothing but Indian form of abstract art so uh, I, I saw this like you know my whole childhood my grandmother used to do on the ground and everywhere when we have like celebration or wedding or whatever so it 
it's a symbol of happiness to me. It's so beautiful. Honestly, it makes me happy as well. It's oh, such a, you. and I love, I, I just love your work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Is this your first year at TOAF? Yes, it's my first year, and I hope I'm gonna be there next year as well because I would love to be here because the experience is just out of the world. That's so amazing. I'm so happy to hear it. And you're you're participating in the online fair as well. Yes, I am online. Yeah. Great. So we can we can find Deep Tea um, at toaf.ca, um, and you can find her work there. Do you also have a social media or a website that you'd like to? I do. So my website is Deep Tea, the art of Deep Tea.ca, and uh, you know Insta is Deep Tea underscore painting. Okay, good to know. I'll definitely be checking you out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for thank talking you, to us. You. Have a great day. Thank I'll you. see you around. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, bye. bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed talking to those four wonderful and unique artists. I certainly did. If you would like to talk to some artists, we have over 400 here with us and many more on the website. So yeah, thanks so much. Bye bye. My name is Chaka Chikodzi. I'm a stone sculptor uh, based in Kingston, Ontario. I work with the volcanic rock that are uh, unique to Zimbabwe. I use mostly hand tools, but uh, as of the last uh, 10 years, I uh, use some uh, air chisels and grinders. Um, around me, is uh, my work that is um, inspired by Zimbabwe's uh, natural rock formations. The shape of the stone is the first source of inspiration for me. Yeah, I'm mostly interested in the material itself, the stone. So I draw most of my inspirations from the material and I'm trying to uh, collaborate with the stone without uh, taking away its own uh, natural sense of time. Hello, my name is Gazale Raskar. My artist name is Gazaraza, and I paint a lot of bright colored uh, pieces basically focusing on women, women rights, uh, women's bodies, life and nature and I really like playing around with patterns and shapes and mixing uh, bright colors together and see how they vibrate. Uh, and yeah, here I created some pieces in 2023 for Art Toronto Art Fair and uh, yeah, I hope that you like it. Hi, my name is Elsa. I'm a calligrapher and photographer in Canada, in Toronto mostly. And this is my first time in TOAF. And I brought my calligraphy pieces. I'm gonna start by uh, actually, I can show my calligraphy pens. Let's say they are very <laughs> interesting. So um, I use the wooden calligraphy pens and uh, 
I, for the smaller pieces, I try to think about a story or a message like these ones are flying, freedom, like a bird, whenever you're not happy with your life or any situation, you can just fly, open your wings and fly and then I get the idea, I try to think about the poems in Persian, mostly they are in Persian or stories and what you see is the alphabets and I try to make a character out of them because uh, I just want them to be a little bit conceptual and let the people think about them, how they see the work, how, what they think about it and what poems maybe it reminds them of if they are Persian people and for the big ones uh, they are the stories of people actually I write their stories in the back and then I cover the painting all and then I start to take the paint out of the painting uh, as it's wet trying to keep the alphabet words how I see that person or his life I'm Darren Rigo, I'm from Gallery 44, and we're here doing cyanotypes at the Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. Um, this is a process that actually predates photography. It's one of the oldest photographic chemical processes out there, and it's one of the safest to do, so it's a great one for the fair here. Um, so come with me, we can head into our first booth. Here we have a bunch of materials. Now when you create a cyanotype, whatever you block from the light will turn white, and wherever the sun touches, UV light, it will turn blue. And uh, you need to kind of make your composition quite quickly because the paper will start exposing. So that's what everybody here is doing. They're planning out their compositions. And then we'll give them a sheet of paper. They'll put that there. They'll cover it all up. And then when that is done, they're going to take it out here into the sun to expose. So the next step is over here. They'll bring it over to the sun and they are going to leave it here in the sun. If it's a very, very sunny day, you can get away with five minutes. Right now we're doing about eight because we have a little bit of cloud cover. So you'll leave it here and the paper is going to expose and the sun is going to activate the salt crystals on the paper and make some chemical reactions. When that has finished, we take it over to our final station over here. And this is our washing station, our developing station. And cyanotype is one of the only processes that you can actually develop in water. So both of these baths are just water. We put it in the first bath for a minute to get most of the chemistry off, and then a second bath to finally clean the paper. When that's all done, we hang it up, let it dry in the sun, and it should be good to last for over 100 years. Um, so yeah, that's us, that's Gallery 44. We're here doing cyanotypes at the Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. Hi there, it's uh, Anthony Vandertoon. I'm an abstract portrait and uh, landscape painter. And uh, this is my booth, welcome to my booth. Um, I work a lot in limited palette. Uh, you can see a lot of the work is uh, emerald tones and blue tones. Uh, I focus on portraiture, abstract portraiture. And uh, I'm also interested in, uh, in landscapes, abstract landscapes. Okay. Uh, the outdoor fair is always a great fair for me. I meet so many great visitors. I meet new collectors and uh, lay the groundwork for uh, future sales. So uh, it's always great to be here and it's, uh, it's been a great weekend. 
Hi, my name is Zahra Saleki and this is the photo series that you can see. Uh, they are basically long exposure motion photos. show you something for this one here it's levitating there's yeah. no, it's nothing it, yeah you need to get low to see the space hello uh, my name is uh, Peter Maurer p-e-t-r-m-a-u-r um, I'm an industrial artist um, I make uh, weird sculptures from found objects and some levitating magnetic heads and I assemble and put them together. Some of these designs here are uh, machine cut water jet uh, shape cut so I designed them and then I cut cut them out put them together and then I find a, a doll head and then kind of give a give it a life give it a bit of a and some sort of a soul to these machines and that's what I try to create and uh, it's whimsical it's fun a lot of found objects and People seem to like it. So in this one here, it, I'll show you that it's levitating. There's like mm, totally suspended. There's nothing underneath there, nothing above, and it's just so levitating and floating around and gives peace to some people. Some gives you weird dreams. It uh, makes life interesting. So if you are looking for more and want to find out where you can find these weird toys, just look for Weird Toy Factory over here and an Instagram weird toy factory let me change that around so you can see it I'm Aurora Light Sculptures, so this is what I make. So this is 10 layers of tissue paper. It's paper mache for big kids with a lot of patience. Um, I'm very inspired by the nature that's around me. I live four and a half hours north of here, so there's a lot of nature uh, surrounding me. And yeah, I try to bring a little bit of that nature inside to the home so that it um, brings a little bit of peace and serenity into your life. My name is Sara Petrov. I'm a mixed media sculptural collage artist in Toronto. My work is about capturing pieces of history in the form of obsolete ephemera. All the items that we no longer use now that we are in a digital culture that we send to landfill, I salvage. 
and I use them in works that tell about history in ways that are very emotionally connective. So images of passports, old items like newspapers, medical illustrations, comics. This is a piece that was all done from vintage coasters that I found at a garage sale. There's so much history that we just throw away and it's really nice to be able to present it in ways that are really engaging. If you want to see any other works, I encourage you to take a look at my website, PetroffDesign.com, and on Instagram, you can find me under Petroff Design and on Facebook. Hi, my name is Gabriel George. I'm an Indo-Canadian visual artist. I'm studying at OCAD University. Now I am in my third year doing sculpture and installation program. So here we can see a few of my sculpture works in bronze, ceramics and some other mediums too. I started my career as a uh, painter. I do uh, mural and pointillism technique paintings more. So now more into uh, sculpture works. So I'm trying to incorporate sculpture and painting together. You can see all my works in my Instagram. It's Gabriel for Art. G A B R I E L number four art A R T. Thank you. Hi, my name is Yana Rezaiva. I just graduated from OCAD University and this is my first time at the Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. I'm an interdisciplinary, sorry, interdisciplinary artist um, who works mainly with encaustic medium which is uh, beeswax and textile. These are traditional textiles, hand woven and um, most of them are old and uh, discarded pieces that I sort of try to preserve in this way um, and I mix it in with pure beeswax from a local farm here in Ontario. So I, I was born in Azerbaijan which is um, has a huge uh, weaving culture so this is also my way to introduce my, my personal cultural identity into the work. So here you see uh, the hand woven textiles again mixed in with the painting. Um, and these again are um, old and some of them are family heirlooms or um, antique carpets that have been somehow damaged and about to be thrown away. Uh, this here is a traditional Azerbaijani headscarf that's also being repurposed. If you'd like to see more work you can go to yanareva.com or at yanareva on Instagram. Hi, my name is Anuta. I am an artist from Vancouver and I do mostly sculptures in different materials from porcelain to resin, from small scale to public art. And I make uh, like happy, joyful art to cheer people up. And um, I just uh, have fun what I am doing and I hope that people when they see my pieces they enjoy it and um, um, just have a better mood after that <laughs> and my um, Instagram is Anuta the artist and my website is uh, anutastudio.com So my name is Christopher Reed Flock. I'm a clayographer out of Hamilton, Ontario. My Instagram is Christopher Reed Flock. 
and uh, I'm taking part in the second uh, Toronto Outdoor Show uh, to display some work that is about the gridification, uh, degridification of uh, ceramic or clay practices in Canada in consideration to how we place our pieces on unknown trees and pulp and paper MDF as well as unknown clay bodies and it's an amalgamation of trying to understand the identity of clay and how we place ourselves uh, on a particular place of making. Hi, I'm Steve Hayes, uh, and this is my art. Um, I don't know uh, what to say about it. it uh, some of them build themselves, just about. Um, everyone's different. Sometimes I know exactly what I want before I make it, and other pieces I just start putting pieces together and they start to hum a little. And uh, I use a lot of different materials, uh, everything from resin to various woods and metals and uh, uh, painted glass and just just a variety of stuff. <laughs> 